Whether it's a client, website, business cards, products, or packaging, there's no visual asset more important to a business than a logo. For a business, a logo is a personal stamp or signature. It conveys a sense of professionalism and suggests the business can be trusted. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to get started, the different types of logo categories, and what they're used for. And then I'm gonna show you how to present your ideas so you get the greatest buy-in from your team or your boss or your client. So, where to start? Well, logos start well before any of the design work. It's all research, research, and more research. Understanding what makes the business unique is critical. Zero in on that point of difference. It's often referred to a USP, or unique selling proposition. This is what sets them apart from others and appeals to their customers. Start with questions that identify their USP, like, what does the business do better than anyone else? What's the best compliment they've ever got from their customers? What's three words that best define their offering? Maybe even what does the team like best about working there? And what brand accomplishment are they most proud of? Understanding the business also means understanding the audience. These are the people that need to recognize and relate to the logo that you'll design. The business might have existing research and data about these demographics and interests. Getting access to this will be really important. Otherwise, you need to find it yourself. The clearer you get on what makes this business unique, the more equipped you'll be to deliver a logo that is relevant, original, and useful. Another thing you might do is scrutinize the competition. What's already on the audience's radar? What are the others doing? Then look at the broader industry and similar industries. Note which logos work and which ones don't. Are there trends that are worth mimicking or ones to steer clear of? This research and the questions raised are great conversations to have with your team as they will have existing insights and opinions. Try to remain objective and use the information gathered to help drive your design decisions and process. A great logo is all about substance over style, and substance comes from research. Equipped with research, it's time to start working on the logo. First things first, step away from the computer. Working on the screen can be slow. It's also distracting. It's tempting us to start perfecting our work before our ideas are really truly ready. Hand sketching is a much more effective way to tap into the thoughts and ideas that are banging around in your head. It also helps you work quickly and fluidly. Thumbnail sketches are common in the early stages of ideation. Why are they called thumbnails? Because they're small. Draw your ideas small, fast and loose. And this will enable you to put a bunch of ideas down together on a single page. Iterate each sketch from the last, injecting something new or a slight refinement. Once you've sketched all the ideas in your head, Try to challenge yourself with different things. Like have you been focused on a pictogram logo, for instance? Maybe try sketching a word mark option, or maybe a monogram one will work better. Okay, let's discuss these categories in more depth. Understanding logo categories helps us design and discuss them and consider why particular design decisions have been made. There are three main ones that we'll discuss here. Word marks, monograms, and pictograms. A word mark is a text-based treatment of the business name. It's where the business has decided that the name is the most important thing to be recognized and remembered. The words are the logo, and the font is essential in conveying the vibe of the business. For example, history and importance are conveyed in the black letter typeface of the New York Times logo. The Jeep word mark, for instance, is a bold sans serif. It's simple, it's functional, but slightly restrained. The typography actually suits the style of the car. The Coca-Cola word mark, I'm sure we all know, a free-flowing and energetic script. Tiffany & Co. uses an elegant, prestigious serif. And it could be argued that the particular shade of Tiffany blue or the Coke red is equally memorable. A monogram is a typographic treatment, but this time focused on the business initials. Consider a very traditional monogram, like when someone's initials are embroidered on a handkerchief, Something like that is personalized and it's got this special quality. Monograms are often used when the name of the business is a person's or a family's name. The initials of someone's name plus that personalized special quality combine to give monograms a prestigious, elite, or maybe even luxury feel. For example, the initials of Louis Vuitton or Coco Chanel are represented in these very recognizable monograms. Such is the prestige of the monogram, a brand might create one from only one initial. The trick, repeat the letter. Here are some examples from renowned fashion houses like Givenchy and Fendi. 
Monograms are suited to being placed on clothing and objects. They've got that refined badge-like appearance. And for instance, you might see it on a team logo or a baseball cap. Modern monograms use the initials of any font or arrangement of letters, like Bang & Olsen. They use an elegant sans serif font and dynamic arrangement of the letters in the monogram. LG arranges the letters to symbolize a smiling face. General Electric, more widely known as GE, has used the same monogram for over 100 years. And Volkswagen's simple stack of the V and the W has stood for over 80 years, with just small adjustments. Pictograms are derived from an image or an icon. The famous ones don't even need a business name alongside. We know who they belong to. For a large, renowned organisation, this sense of familiarity is really important. Think of how immediately recognisable the Nike swoosh is. Like monograms, pictograms can be used at very small size, like on a mobile phone screen. Here they identify a brand without the surrounding information. They are refined image or idea, possibly maybe a bit abstract. More of a representation designed down to the essence. The evolution of the Instagram logo is a great example of this process of refinement. Today, it's a representation of a camera rather than a literal image. The Apple logo has been refined in a similar way, although it still looks like an apple. Understanding different logo types enables you to choose the best approach for your clients or business. However, these categories aren't always clear cut. Consider the Toyota logo, often considered like a monogram because it's a T. The logo is also a pictogram. Some see an abstract bull or a man in a cowboy hat, but it could also actually be a word mark. Similarly, the Beats logo, this is obviously a letter B, so it's a monogram. But looking closely, it's also a pictogram. It's a representation of a head wearing headphones. The FedEx logo is well known and as a word mark. But have you ever noticed that the clever pictogram within, the arrow represents the forward moving service that FedEx provides. It's okay if categories overlap or terms are used in different ways, as long as you understand the concepts. Categories are really useful tools. Okay, now that we've got the basic categories, let's look at how we could design them in Canva. For this exercise, I'm gonna work with a not-for-profit brand. I always like to start with a word mark. It's a text-based treatment of a business name. So it's simple, to the point, and really relies on the font that you choose. In Canva, the easiest way to begin is to look at some of the pre-existing templates. To find some examples, type in text logo into the templates search field. Let's take a look at one. The business name is presented as a display font and there's some detailing with the drop shadow effect too. When designing a logo, you need to ask what suits the client or the brand. What is their product or service or who is their audience? It is easy to achieve a new result. Just duplicate the page, select the text box, experiment with the font drop down menu. Perhaps a handwritten font like this will work. Simple adjustments to scale and shadow will start to refine things. Or perhaps a more formal font feels appropriate. Duplicate the page and select another like this. As you design, consider how the logo can be refined. By tightening up the letter spacing, like this, we can make the design feel more unified. We can change the color of the font. And the color of the shadow here. Starting with a blank page, Type in the business name and think about what font would really suit the mood. Then refine the details like letter spacing, color and effects. Continue duplicating your work to try different things, keeping the client and the audience always in mind. Monograms are made using the initials of a business or a person's name. Here's an example. 
By clicking on this template, you can see that some monograms have already been developed as part of the set. Let's look at some other letter arrangements. To duplicate, click and hold Alt or Option, and then move and scale the letters. Of course, a very traditional monogram might be created from a script typeface, where the letters interlock. With these two text boxes selected, I'm going to search for a script. This might work. If the letters are closer together, so they overlap. For a monogram, try to achieve a nice balanced flow, no matter what the font. What about if you're starting from scratch? Work out what style is going to be suitable. For instance, would a serif work? Or should the monogram have a more modern feel with a sans serif? A script is going to look formal and traditional, but does that suit the client? Make a plan and try sketching out a few ideas before you jump on the screen, and then you can start working things up in Canva. A pictogram is the refined graphic or the icon part of a logo. It can work on its own, but it can also partner nicely with a word mark. Scrolling down the logo templates in Canva, we can see lots of these. Take this logo, for example. It combines images of a burger and a tree. The graphic is simple, not a detailed illustration. The style, as well as the combination, is clever, original, and memorable. When creating a pictogram, start with information about the client. Who are they? What is their service? Where are they located? What are their values? And what makes them different? Come up with graphics that represent these answers. This is another opportunity to sketch lots of quick, loose ideas. Try to capture the essence of the graphic to refine it to its most simplest form. Maybe two ideas can combine to create something completely original like this. Armed with lots of ideas and sketches, jump into Canva. Start in the Elements tab and begin your search. And pull lots of possibilities onto your page. Think about how to experiment and further simplify things. Pictograms might look remarkably simple, but they require a lot of thought, iteration, and refinement. Keep developing those ideas and trying lots of options. The final thing I wanted to go over is presenting your logo ideas. The way you present can be designed. So prepare strategically. Include your research and explain your thinking. Show the development that you've taken along the way. Taking the audience on a journey is gonna help them understand your decision making. Involving them in the process helps them feel invested and encourage them to make small, specific decisions. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, you might initially present the logo in black and white so they can focus on the logo's shapes and form. And then if you've got color ideas, you can show them later in the presentation. This step-by-step -step presentation leads to organized and logical decisions. Try presenting your logo design in use. Mock-ups of stationery, signage, products, or even digital media will help the client see the logo come to life. Feedback is inevitable, and it should be welcome. The client needs to feel really comfortable and excited to move forward. Editing and refining the logo with the business leaders is a necessary part of the process. They might love a single concept or they might love all your concepts. They might love a single detail and ask you to develop on that. Or they might send you back to the drawing board. And that's okay. Your job is to design something long lasting and great, creating something that they're gonna love. It takes time, but it's all part of the process. Oh, you're still here. Well, if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button down below or even tell us what you want to learn in the comments section.